five theories that are swirling around the internet about why Fox News fired Tucker Carlson. Michael Snyder reports, why in the world would Fox News fire Tucker Carlson? And the first day of that, they've lost almost a billion dollars of value in their stock. He had the highest rating show on cable news by far, and he's wildly popular with millions upon millions of Americans. Unfortunately, if you want to survive as a cable news host in this day and age, popularity is not enough. You must please the elitists that own your network. Murdoch owns them. Uh, the advertisers that are paying the network's bills and the political establishment in Washington. For years, Tucker Carlson has repeatedly said things on his show that no other cable news host would dare to say, and it was inevitable that this would get him into big trouble. Tucker understood this very well, but he didn't think that he would be the one on the chopping block quite yet. In fact, on his Friday show, he told viewers that he would be back for another show on Monday. Fox announced Carlson's departure on Monday morning, and so far no one has given a reason, but it seems clear that the move came as a surprise to Carlson himself, who signed off his Friday show saying, we'll be back Monday, see you then. Apparently, the decision to get rid of Tucker was very abrupt. According to the Daily Mail, he did not know that Fox News was firing him until very shortly before it was announced. Tucker Carlson was blindsided by his firing from Fox News and learned it of it on Monday morning shortly before it was announced, sources tell Daily Mail. Even some of his closest staff were unaware that his show had been axed, reading about it for the first time on Twitter. No one, uh, no one I know was told about this beforehand. We were blindsided. One senior staff who worked closely with Tucker's show, Tucker Carlson Tonight, told Daily Mail. So why did Fox News decide to do this? The following are five theories that are currently swirling around the internet. Number one, the Dominion lawsuit. Losing $787.5 million can motivate a company to make big changes, and many news outlets are pointing out that the firing of Tucker Carlson has come very shortly after the settlement with Dominion was revealed. Right-wing primetime host Tucker Carlson is leaving Fox News immediately. The cable network announced Monday. The announcement came days after Fox News' parent company settled Dominion Voting Systems' defamation lawsuit for $787.5 million. The company's hosts were not required to talk about the lawsuit or make an apology for it as part of the settlement, CNBC previously reported. But apparently there are some inside Fox News that are pouring cold water on this theory. The Denver-based company, which last week settled its $1.6 billion defamation case against Fox News for $787.5 million did not have any influence on Fox and Carl's decision to part ways. People with knowledge of the situation tell The Wrap. Dominion has already collected its payout from Fox News and had no comment on Monday's development. While the lawsuit may not have directly led to Tucker's firing, it's likely that Moving forward, management at Fox News wants to have much more control over what is being said on their shows. And that could potentially be the reason why independent thinkers such as Dan Bongino and Tucker Carlson are now gone. If you go to Tucker's personal website right now, you are greeted by a message that tells you that Tucker Carlson is, quote, the sworn enemy of censorship, end quote. I think that says a lot. And number two, Big Pharma. Less than a week ago, Tucker brutally attacked Big Pharma and their COVID vaccines during one of his monologues. It was one of the best monologues of his entire career, and millions of us loved it. But it was not something he should have done if he wanted to have a long career in cable news. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is suggesting that this is the real reason why Fox News canned him. Fox fires Tucker Carlson five days after he crossed the red line by acknowledging that the TV networks pushing a deadly and ineffective vaccine to please pharma advertisers. Carlson's breathtaking, courageous April 19 monologue broke TV's two biggest rules. Tucker told the truth about how greedy pharma advertisers controlled TV news content, and he lambasted obsequious newscasters, newscasters 
for promoting jobs they knew would be lethal and worthless. And for many years, Tucker has had the nation's biggest audience, average three and a half million, ten times the size of CNN. Fox just demonstrated the terrifying power of Big Pharma. Number three, Rupert Murdoch and Fox News management. It's no secret that management at Fox News was trying, uh, was tiring of Tucker Carlson, and the Los Angeles Times reporting that the decision to give Tucker the axe came straight from Fox Corporation Chairman Rupert Murdoch. Fox News announced the stunning departure of its top-rated host Monday, with no explanation. But people familiar with the situation who were not authorized to comment publicly said the decision to fire Carlson came straight from Fox Corporation Chairman Rupert Murdoch with input from board members and other Fox Corporation executives. The newspaper is also claiming that allegations made by Abby Grossberg played a major role. Carlson's exit is related to the discrimination lawsuit filed by Abby Grossberg, the producer fired by the network last month. The sources said Carlson's senior executive producer, Justin Wells, has also been terminated, according to insiders. Grossberg was moved off of Sunday Morning Futures with Maria Bartiromo and onto Tucker Carlson Tonight, where she alleged she was bullied and subjected to anti-Semitic, anti-Semitic comments, according to a lawsuit in New York. Personally, I strongly doubt this. Abby Grossberg is no longer at Fox News, and all the allegations that she's making her lawsuit sound rather sketchy. I think that executives at Fox News have no other dirt on Tuck, Tucker, and so they're just throwing this out there to make themselves look like the good guys. And ultimately, there may be a much different reason why Rupert Murdoch and other executives at Fox wanted Tucker gone. One insider says that Murdoch is actually planning to sell the company and that will be much easier to do without Tucker as the main star. We believe Rupert wants to sell the company and it's harder to find an institutional buyer with Tucker as the main star. Tucker gone makes it more of an appealing media company to buy, the source said. Number four, January 6th. Tucker Carlson got into a lot of hot water for exposing what really happened at the U.S. Capitol January 6, 2021. Other mainstream news outlets have relentlessly characterized it as an insurrection, but the raw footage provided to Tucker by House Speaker Kevin McCarthy shows that it was not the case at all. Of course, many establishment politicians in both parties pushed back against Tucker's reportedly reporting really hard, and the Los Angeles Times is telling us that this is another way and the reason why Murdoch was so eager to show him the door. Murdoch also was uh, said to be concerned about Carlson's coverage of the January 6, 2021 insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. The host has prompted the conspiracy theory that it was provoked by government agents, and Carlson has called Ray Epps, a Texas man who participated in the storming of the Capitol but did not enter the building, an FBI plant without presenting any evidence. And number five, running for president. For years, there have been rumors that Tucker Carlson would run for president in 2024. And now that he's free from his obligations at Fox News, many are claiming that he will put, pull the trigger on such a move. After the, cons- the conservative commentator Tucker Carlson left Fox News on Monday, public speculation has suggested that he may mount a 2024 presidential campaign. He's running, tweeted Stephen Miller, conservative commentator and editor at The Spectator, a sentiment that many media figures on the right echoed, it significantly changes the GOP 2024 primary overnight, wrote Philip Wegman, a White House correspondent for Real Clear News. Keep an eye out for speeches in the Granite State, tweeted fellow conservative commentator Hugh Hewitt, referring to New Hampshire. He's always downplayed the possibility of running for president, but that's an open possibility now, wrote Christopher Rufo, a conservative writer and fellow of the Manhattan Institute, a leading think tank on the right. Personally, I believe that this is a bunch of nonsense. I don't think that Tucker Carlson has ever had any plans to turn for public, run for public office. And I certainly don't think that he's going to run for president in 2024. But I'm sure that there will continue to be a lot of speculation about his future in days ahead. Personally, I hope that he takes at least a bit of time off. He has certainly earned it. This is by Michael Snyder.
He says, my, about the author, my name is Michael. And my brand new book, book entitled End Times is now available on Amazon. In addition to my new book, I've written six other books that are available on Amazon, including Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters. When you purchase any of these books, you help to support the work that I'm doing. And one way that you can really help is by sending copies as gifts to family and friends. Time is short and I need help getting these warnings into the hands of as many people as possible. I've also started a brand new Substack newsletter and I encourage you to subscribe so that you won't miss any of the latest updates. I've published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream and the Most Important News. And the articles that I publish on those sites are republished on dozens of other prominent websites all over the globe. I always freely and happily allow others to republish my articles on their own websites, but I also ask that they include this about the author section with each article. The material contained in this article is for general information purposes only, and readers should consult licensed professionals before making any legal business, financial or health decisions. I encourage you to follow me on social media, Facebook and Twitter, and any way that you can share these articles is, with others is definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, I strongly urge you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. And this is on End of the American Dream by Michael Snyder. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.